This is the Dr. Berg Show. Live from the nation's capital, it's time to get healthy, lose weight, and feel great. Call now to speak with Dr. Berg at 866-561-4292. And now, Dr. Eric Berg. Hi guys, we're back. It's Wednesday and we are live. I think last um, last week people thought it was a pre-recorded, but it wasn't. But we also have Karen here. Uh, she's going to be taking a lot of calls, or actually a lot of comments from uh, Facebook and YouTube. Yep. Right, Karen? Yep. Okay, good. Hey, listen, if you have a question, uh, call us at 866-561-4292. Okay? All right, let's just, uh, there's uh, someone been holding on, uh, for about 34 minutes, so we're going to go to New Jersey to take hey, a call from... I was born in Jersey. You, you were. I was. That's right. Go Jersey. Hey, you're on the air. It's uh, Pervy, right? Pervy? Are you there? Hello? Okay, we'll come back to you. Hey, Kim, you're from Arizona. You had a question. Hey, you're on the air. It's uh, Pervy. Yes. Um, hi, Dr. Berg. Thank hi. you so much for taking the call. Sure. Pervy? Hey, um, our there? question is regarding um, my husband and I both have been are on keto and have been on since October. I'm on for weight loss. I've lost 25 pounds. Thank you so much for all your help. Sure. And I'm doing it much healthily because you've got me on green. <laughs> But um, I just kind of jumped into this when uh, my husband was put on it for uh, by his integrated medical doctor for his cancer that he has squamous cell in the vocal cord. And um, this is their new way now. Um, it's controversial, you know, in the cancer world to take them off those smoothies and all of the juices and put them into a keto diet. But she's jumping ahead and doing it. Um, can, 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 you turn down, can you turn down your volume just a tad little bit if I can hear some uh, feedback? Here we go, there we go. And so um, with the squamous cell, um, she put him on the keto diet, and he was at about 150 before we started keto. He's down to 138. He has no need to lose weight, and so he's 5'10 and 138 now. He's doing about 17 to 1,800 calories a day, and we're in an 18-6 window with two large meals, no mm -hmm. snacks. Um, his blood sugar, since he got the flu, and we've been checking blood sugars for several months now. He has a long, well, he's a scientist, so he has, he's been very good about that. One thing he's noticed when he caught the flu at, in December, and is just getting over it now, is that it made his blood sugars change. But at night, uh, his fasting blood sugar went up again, uh, about 10 degrees. He's about 10 points higher than he would normally be. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, it was actually higher when he woke up instead of being lower like it normally had been. Right. Can you think of any reason why this is happening and how we can, like, help him keep some more weight on with uh, the current way in which we're doing it? We're doing 80% uh, fat, 20% protein, and about 5 to 10% carb. Yeah. And his glucose... It's changing from about 95 to a little over 100 between okay. 11 p.m. and 8, 8 a.m. Okay, good. So, Kim, a couple things. Because um, <clears throat> if, if you have two situations right now, you have someone that wants to improve their immune system as much as possible. Uh, he had some cancer. And then at the same time, he doesn't want to keep losing weight um, because the immune system is uh, going to be improved when he does intermittent fasting. So, uh, and, of course, if you try to push it to one meal a day, he probably will, might lose a little bit more weight, so he's going to have to eat a little bit more. So it's really a juggle between um, getting enough calories uh, and, uh, and doing the intermittent fasting. Uh, and I think he's going to have, he could probably add the weights in there now to try to maybe uh, increase more muscle mass. But the point is that I think two meals are going to be good for him and then just increase a little bit more calorie. Now, as far as the uh, flu, which is viral and the blood sugar's going up, what happens when your immune system kicks in, guess what? You get a spike of cortisol. Cortisol is the, one of the main hormones that is supposed to uh, support the white blood cells. Okay? That's why when you get sick or um, any type of infection, they inject you with uh, a, a steroid, which is cortisone. And so um, cortisol is an immune suppressor. Okay? So as soon as you kick in, like a viral thing, and then all of a sudden the cortisol goes up, cortisol releases sugar. Okay, it's a glucose-releasing thing. So you're going to release a little sugar, and there goes the spike. That's the relationship. 
So the goal is just to get the immune system up and then the sugars will come down. But that's the mechanism. Good question though. All right, let's go to Mandy. She's been waiting for 24 minutes and you're from uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. Go ahead, Mandy. Uh, this is Randy in Flagstaff. Oh, Randy, okay, sorry. Got a typo there. How you doing, Randy? Uh, yeah, I'm good, very good, thank you. I listened to your first video uh, about December 2nd, just on apple cider vinegar. And that was the day I kind of decided to cut out all sugar because I had a couple of joints in my fingers that were just starting to get a little bit sore. And uh, as I started listening to a few of your uh, videos on YouTube, I decided to cut out all snacking too. And, and so in the past seven weeks, I've lost 24 pounds. Wow. Great. Just by cutting snacking sugar alone. <laughs> wow. And when I did that, when I did that, I realized I was already on a keto diet because all I basically eat is vegetable salads and fish and meat anyway. Great. So I didn't really have to do anything, but I have a hard time trying to keep up with like your uh, 10 cups of salad. Right now, it's all I can do to eat a, it is like a half a salad and then maybe some meat. And uh, then I might eat breakfast around two after two in the afternoon and then dinner around five to four to seven. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm down at like one meal a day and maybe every, every other day I'll do a breakfast. Okay. But I have a hard time eating much food at one time. Yeah. But I do also uh, do your sea kelp, your uh, your electrolyte powder. I do that every day. Then with lemon juice uh, in water as well, add the uh, the organic lemon. Okay. And I do your regrowth juice and your uh, cruciferous caps every day to kind of make up maybe for the salad I'm not getting. Yeah. Enough of. Do you still want to lose uh, weight? But I Pardon? Do you still want to lose weight? Yeah, I okay. I'm only five four, and in the weight I was up until my mid forties was like one thirty five. Then in my fifties, late fifties, I got up to one forty five, and then in my sixties now, I got up to one sixty three. And I'd like to get down to maybe one hundred and thirty pounds or so. Got it. Let me give you some tips uh, on that. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, I think. You've done really, really good, and then you're trying to uh, consume that mass amount of vegetables, which it, I'm telling you, it is difficult to do that. <clears throat> now, if I'm doing two meals, uh, I might do one of the meals. I might do uh, most of the vegetable and a little protein, and then the other meal I'll do more protein, more fat. So, um, because it is difficult if you're doing one meal to consume seven to ten cups of vegetables, so I do understand that. Um, so, a couple things that you can do. One is to maybe spread that one meal a little bit further apart. So maybe it's like one hour of like you eat it and then you wait an hour and then eat the protein. You know, that's one way. The other thing you can do is blend the kale. You, you're probably already doing this, but I just want to let you know. Uh, I like to take kale, pack the blender up, and if you still want to lose weight and you don't want to add berries, um, and I have the electrolyte powder, you already have this, you can use the electrolyte powder, which has no sugar, or the wheatgrass, which lemon, which has no sugar, as a sweetener. And you put that in there instead of the fruit, add the water, and it'll be sweet, but it's like just pure kale and no sugar. That will, that's a great way to drink your vegetables to get a little bit more. So that's kind of a couple little tips there, but I think you're doing great. And uh, the, the, the purpose of pushing up those vegetables is just to make sure that your liver doesn't end up fatty and just to get all the nutrients. But I think what you're doing now is good. You're enhancing the potassium and um, and I would just kind of take that one meal and just spread it out a little bit longer so you're not cramming all this food in one sitting. Thanks, Randy. All right, and we're gonna go to Karen. Is there yeah. any questions over here, Karen? Yeah. YouTube, Facebook is in the house. <laughs> I just had to say that. Yeah, I'm going to start over here with uh, YouTube. We have Mommy and Tori post. It says, uh, Dr. Berg, I've been getting a lot of heart palpitations with MCT oil. I read somewhere this could be due to die-off symptoms since MCT is an antifungal. Is this true? No, that's false. Um, okay. It's not die-off at all. What's happening is um, you're kind of pushing a, a bit of fat for the uh, gallbladder to work a little harder. And so what happens is that congestion kind of backs up a little bit on the liver which is right connected 
to the rib cage, which is right next to the heart. So the liver is connected to the heart, which is connected to the, it's all connect. It's all putting pressure on the heart a little bit, and that could uh, stimulate um, the little nerves that go to the heart. It's called the pacemaker, and that could throw off the rhythm a little bit. That's probably what it is. So there is a connection between the gallbladder, fats, and heart rhythm. That's mm. probably what's happening. All right, interesting. Well, that leads right into my next question. We have on Facebook, we have uh, Jasmine who's asking, can you do keto without a gallbladder? Well, I've done a lot of videos and that's a common question and you absolutely can do keto. In fact, you should do keto without a gallbladder. The only thing you have to realize without a gallbladder, you're not gonna have the sufficient concentrated amount of bile, which, what does that mean? That means, means you don't have enough bile. That means, Karen, the significance of that means that you're only going to digest 50% of your fat instead of like 98% of your fat. So that'll put a little more stress on the pancreas because they work together. Now the pancreas has to make a little bit more enzyme, lipase, to do the work. So, but we still don't get 100% of our full breakdown of the fat. Fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K. And the other essential fatty acids which are necessary for the the cell membranes and the hormones and all sorts of things. So, um, but you might not see any symptoms right off the bat. They take a long time because they're fat soluble vitamins that uh, kind of get stored over a long period of time. So I would um, add a little bit of bile in, in, into your meals. Like you can take a, something called gallbladder formula one after a meal. And I think that will be enough for the whole day. If you did that, you'll be fine and you'll probably not have any deficiencies of the fat soluble vitamins. So. That's what I recommend, Karen. Very good. Uh, now, um, at the end of this show, I always like to um, kind of give some really valuable information. Uh, so, got a teaser. Last, yeah, that's right. Last week we talked about the ten worst diet tips. This week, Karen. I think it was seven. Seven. That's right. I'm sure there's more, but. So this week, Karen. Yeah. I'm going to reveal. Yeah. The absolute best nut on the keto and the worst nut on the keto okay. diet, okay? Awesome. And in addition, I'm gonna talk about the absolute best berry you can con consume and the worst berry. All so right. you have to know this valuable information. Good. This is gonna be really good. Good, and so, there's actually a bonus gift that we are gonna share with you at the end. Wow. There's so I much. I didn't know about that. There's just, it's, gonna it's be bountiful. It's gonna be exciting. At the end, it is. So stay tuned. Hey, Rachel, you're uh, from Detroit. You had a question. Go ahead. I do. Can I just say that I believe that you are a godsend? Oh, thanks. That's all that you do. So my question is, um, it's a two-part question, kind of. So I have had, I had osteocolitis as a young girl. So I had my large bowel removed, and I have a J-pouch now. Everything is reconnected. And I also had my gallbladder taken out. Um, a few years later, I have in the last two years lost 118 pounds just by, um, dieting and exercising. Um, but throughout that process, I have also, I have, um, large ovarian cysts where the doctors want to do a hysterectomy and I don't want that. So I have decided to cut a lot of hormones out. I am aware that all the things I have done over the years, not taking care of my body, aided to those, um, cysts. And so I am doing a different diet now, which is kind of like the keto diet from you, but I'm only eating seafood with lots of vegetables, um, cut out the sugars um, and the carbs as well. I've lost 10 pounds in one week just from doing this. I'm not sure if that's how it should be, but I have. Um, and so my question is always, am I getting the right nutrients because I'm aware that the things don't kind of stay in my system as long because all I have is a small bowel. So my food kind of goes in and it right. comes out the same. Good um, question. So that is one thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a good question. Are you doing any intermittent fasting, Rachel? I am. I'm doing two um, meals a day, and from that I have lost 10 pounds in one week, literally. Well, it was like five days. Awesome. Um, and I feel great. I do. Um, the sugar addiction I have is um, subsiding, and I'm drinking lots of water. Um, so thank you. You're Your welcome. videos are very informational. You're welcome. Let me t let me give you some tips, okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So here's the thing: you lost weight, um, a ton of weight, um, before you even started the keto. Okay. So um, probably what happened is you had an underlying 
insulin resistance issue that now it's going to be improved but before you know if you lose weight without improving that you may not still be able to uh, have the optimum absorption of amino acids which is protein thus the um, maybe the skin is uh, sagging a little bit too much now doing intermittent fasting combined with uh, keto is going to be key for your tone of your skin the quality of skin and collagen and joints. So that's going to actually improve over the next year or so. Now, here's the thing. You don't have a large bowel. I think you just have a small intestine. So we're, uh, you don't have a gallbladder. So you need to find where that went and get it back and get someone <laughs> to insert it back in there. I have some spare ones in the back. We'll send you in the mail. Um, but the thing that you need to do is you need to um, try to push to one meal a day because that way you can uh, really take your, it's called autophagy, which is recycling of proteins to the next level, which is going to be really good for you. But the, the, the problem is without a large bowel and adding all the vegetables that I'm recommending, all the fiber, um, you're not going to be able to absorb those uh, fibers or, or utilize those fibers like you would. So you might, gonna, you're going to have to consume a little less of the fibers or it's just going to go right through you because you can't ferment them correctly. Um, so, that being said, there's a couple nutrients that you're going to have to probably take in addition to food. One is the, the trace minerals, very important, and minerals. So get a plant-based trace minerals and just minerals like the electrolyte. I think that'll be important uh, because it's hard to get that from the food. I love the fact that you're doing the seafood. That's great. Keep doing it because that's going to help the cyst on the ovary because that's a high estrogen and uh, sea kelp will help that. Uh, and then the other thing that you might need to substitute is um, the B vitamins. And lastly, some of the fat-soluble vitamins because you don't have a gallbladder. So you might want to do, um, instead of taking the fat-soluble vitamins individually, consume uh, maybe some bile salts after the meal. And then at that meal, have some healthy fat so you can just absorb the, the uh, fat-soluble fat vitamins from the food that you're eating rather than add the fat-soluble vitamins from an external source, okay? All right, well, thanks so much, Rachel. Uh, good question. Now, Karen, we're gonna go to you. Do you have a quick question here? <laughs> no, it's a very long question. Okay. But I know you'll answer it. So, uh, we'll go to YouTube here. I have Kalindu who says, I'm a vegetarian from birth. I do eat lots of fats. Blood sugar, pressure, and thyroxine levels are normal. However, triglycerides are high has back pain, lost a few pounds doing your program, I guess, doesn't say exactly. Okay. So if you have triglycerides, uh, which by the way are um, blood fats, <clears throat> now you typically are going to use some of the triglycerides at, at, as, as fuel for the body. Okay, so you can use this as fuel. The, the problem is if it's high, uh, that typically means your carb is a bit too high, your carb level. And because you're a vegan, that's it's challenging because of the higher amounts of carbohydrates in vegan food. So I don't know what you're eating. I would just analyze that um, based on trying to get your carbs down right about 30 grams uh, per day. Um, that might be tough, but that's going to bring the triglycerides down to a, a much better level. I did create a video you can watch. Just type Dr. Berg on YouTube and vegan and you'll, it'll come up with some ideas of what you can eat. Uh, you do eat a lot of fat, that's good, but I think we just have to figure out how to reduce some of the carbs uh, in your diet. Okay? Okay, okay good. Karen? Great. I have another one. Okay. So a lot of questions coming in about calories. Um, some people still have attention on calories. How many calories is too many calories? How many calories should you take in on keto? Um, so take that one. Yeah, I have a video on that too. Um, actually, I have a video do you have on... A, is there something you don't have a video on? Uh, what is the one thing? Actually, there is one. No, I, you don't have no, a video and on. Karen, since you just brought that up, uh -oh. um, there is, um, <laughs> and this is not the right format, but this is a, a little form that uh, where you can download. Okay, there's a link down below. You can download it, and it's basically. Wait a minute. A summary. This was a bonus at the end. Oh, well, you're, I guess I'm giving you an early bonus. I didn't know this was the bonus. Okay. Okay. So mid, anyway, now that I opened bonus. a can of worms, okay, <laughs> so um, basically this is a sheet. It's called a Keto and Intermittent Fasting Sheet. Every single video, there's a lot of videos on here. You can click and watch it and get your question answered. 
But you want me to answer this question though? Yes. About calories. Okay. So here, here's the thing about calories. Um, I think that uh, the, the challenge is going from three meals a day. Let's say you're doing three meals a day. Uh, you're going to you're gonna need between 1,500 to 1,800 calories. Okay, if you really want to know. But those calories must be, you know, three to six ounces of protein um, and a lot of vegetables. And, and fat. And fat. So you're going to have to go to, you know, it's in the book of giving examples and things, but I'm not going to give you details of that. But I have some videos as well. But that's kind of what you want to look at as far as calories. Now, as you reduce your number of meals, um, you're not going to keep your calories the same. It's impossible. If you're going to do a one meal, 1,800 calorie meal, Karen, <laughs> that is a lot of food. Right. So you can't digest that. So, but here's the cool thing. As you do intermittent fasting, the need for food goes down. So if you're doing one meal a day. And why is that? Because your body's more efficient and you're getting uh, a conservation of nutrients. It's and top, ideally, because it's burning my own fat, right? The meal that you're eating is your own fat. So you gotta think of, like, if you're doing one meal, and you're doing a thousand calorie meal. It, it reminds me of that commercial, I'm, I'm cleaning my oven. It's a sub Remember that? No. Yeah. The lady was out somewhere? No, I don't, I don't oh. remember that. So right now, ideally, we're all having a meal of our own fat. Yeah, if you're not eating, you're having a meal, you're eating. Your okay. body's eating your own fat as the meal. So okay. you're not starving. So really, if you look at the actual external calories that you're putting in the body, Karen, yeah. at a one meal, it's probably going to be about 1,000 thousand calories, maybe 1,200 calories. All right. Okay? Okay. So that's, um, and you'll feel satisfied with that. But it might be, like mentally you might think, wow, I'm not getting enough food, but, but you're stuffed. Okay, so it's going to be okay. So I hope that answered that. I think it did. Okay, and one last thing. Um, this is not ready yet, but I'm going to show you one little thing. You probably can't see it, but this is a, a new little booklet. It's a Kindle book. It's not even available yet, but it'll be available in a couple of days. I just wanted to mention, because a lot of comments from people are like, what can I do, alternative uh, recipes, can I have my dessert? This is strictly keto desserts in yummies. Yummy. Okay, and so there's a lot of cool recipes. It'll be available in a couple of days on my website and also it'll link right to Amazon which basically will give you some amazing ideas for delicious desserts so you never ever have to deprive yourself again and don't feel like you're starving. Well I, I want to say you know speaking of yummy food for those of you who have been on the keto lab the keto and intermittent fasting lab group it's a closed group on Facebook which you can ask to be invited into um, these members are awesome and they are putting a lot of photos and a lot of videos on of their keto foods, desserts, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and uh, some amazing ideas there. Uh, it's, you know, so we have the recipes, but boy, that, that closed group, those guys are sharing some amazing recipes. They're so. very nice people. Very I mean, I was nice. Like, I am like, funny, nice people. Yeah, I'm just real. I think it's their blood sugars are really, really, really coming up nut level. So yeah, they're there's, just there's no a like lot nicer than when people. they first started. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. nicer now. No, it's the greatest group of people. Everybody's helping oh, yeah. each other. They're awesome. Um, supporting each other. You know, go you go, and giving ideas and. Um, sharing videos, Dr. Berg videos that have the answers. It's a cool group of people. Yeah, they're very cool. So, yeah. a lot of recipes. So, we're going to go to Lillian from Maryland. Um, hi, Lillian. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I'm 83 years old. I need to lose at least 15 pounds. Okay. And I'm hypoglycemia okay. and hypothyroid. I've got a pacemaker and I go into AFib and it's like I can't seem to lose any weight. I don't have a gallbladder and no matter what I do, I try to do like two meals, but my blood sugar drops. Right. Okay. So Good question. I, I don't know what body type I am, mm -hmm. but I seem to like when I eat nuts, I break out on my face. Okay. It was little white bumps on it, and I was wondering what I could do to really lose this weight. 
Okay, good. So, uh, and I will be sending you a spare gallbladder in the mail. So I'll get your address after this. Okay. I'm being, All right. I'm being really totally joking. Sarcasm. This is the story of is, my life. He sorry, says something, and I'm that. standing next to him, and I say, "He's joking. He's just joking." Okay. I like that. <laughs> so let me tell you what to do, Lillian. Uh, uh, so here's here's the the most important thing right now is the fact that you have. And by the way, what I'm going to tell you um, is not meant to diagnose you or give you medical advice. Everything that I'm saying is for your own entertainment, okay? And you're, you and your doctor, okay? But here's the point. Because you have atrial fib, um, chances are you need some more electrolytes, specifically potassium. By taking extra potassium, uh, that's going to greatly, greatly assist in improving your blood sugars. What's happening with hypoglycemia is you can't go from one meal to the next. I've done a lot of videos on this. So you're going to have to add a lot more fat to the meal. But that's not all. You have to add potassium. Potassium improves insulin resistance, which means that your body now doesn't have to jack up your insulin so high. So hypoglycemics have high levels of insulin. That's what's pushing the blood sugars down. And the adrenals might be weak, can't push it back up. So if you were just to have a meal and the first thing you eat is a huge salad and then add some minerals, add the fat in there, apple cider vinegar, that's going to help you. Okay, go longer and just do that consistently. All of a sudden you go longer and longer and longer and now you don't need the snack anymore. And then the hypoglycemic thing goes away and then the weight loss uh, happens. But the reason why you're not losing enough weight right now is simply because you still have a blood sugar thing. So your goal right now should just to improve the hypoglycemic reaction don't do nuts, do some other fat, and then watch what happens to the weight. The weight's going to come next, but um, you might need to substitute maybe for the gallbladder support and then also electrolytes for the atrial fib just to speed things up. Okay? Thanks, Lillian. So we're going to go to Lori. She's from Florida. Um, you're doing intermittent fasting right now, taking the kale shakes, but you still have restless legs? Yes, and sometimes it's my whole body. Okay. I'm adding to the kale shakes uh, turmeric, uh, black pepper, electrolyte powder, raw wheat grass juice powder, and uh, non-fortified nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. And then at night when I have those problems, I take a little bit of magnesium chloride and calcium citrate. Uh -huh. and, and usually that'll, that'll stop it. But last night it didn't. It just like my whole body and it just, and I, it went away for a while and then it came back. And I'm wondering, am I adding too much of something in or do I need to add something else in? Okay. Um, are you, how and I want to thank you, Dr. Berg, for everything you've done. You have changed my life, given me hope. I can control my health and my weight for the rest of my life. And I just thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. That's okay, great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how, how many times are you eating a day? Twice. Okay. Are you, have you been doing this a while or are you just getting started? I've been keto... Um, adapting for, I mean, I've been on keto for quite a while. The two meals a day, it's been maybe a couple weeks. Okay. And um, before this, did you have more restless legs, or is this a new thing? This is new. Oh. Ah. Now, is it actually uh, shaking, or is it like a vibration that you just, like, you just can't, you can't just relax with the legs? It's like something crawling. Okay. And, you know, I just keep moving them around and wiggling my toes and stuff. And finally, I just like, I can't stand this. I get up and, and take a couple of things. And for the most part, the magnesium and calcium seems to help. But last night, it just, it just didn't. I think I know what's going on. And I'm thinking, maybe I'm adding too much. Okay, good. Yeah. I think it's a, a pH problem. Uh, because when you, when you do the keto, um, you're gonna, ketones are acidic. And what's going to happen, your pH might become a little bit more acidic. And if the pH is more acidic, what happens is you don't hold the calcium as much, and that could you could make you feel like it's crawling. Which inter what's interesting about that is a calcium deficiency and a calcium excess can actually give you the same symptom. So I think it's a calcium deficiency. So what I think you should do, add a little calcium, not the magnesium. You maybe go with more of the calcium right before bed and see if that crawling goes away. It's it's either calcium or um, you might need an omega-3 but I think your pH is a little too acidic and we need to like alkalize it just a little bit. Okay Lori? 
Thanks for calling. All right, Karen. Okay. We're over to you. Okay, good. I have three. So the first one is, does MCT oil in a drink, in whatever, while you're fasting, break your fast? Okay, so it depends how much you have. If you have a teaspoon, probably not. If you have a lot, yes, because it's a fat. And you got to think like this. Anything that requires uh, a bit of uh, calories to digest will spike the insulin. But if we're actually going to compare, let's say, a tablespoon of MCT oil versus a, a fourth, donut, a, right, or a fourth of a glass of uh, orange juice, it's going to be the the oil is going to be insignificant. So it's going to be very minor. So it'll be a little thing, but not nearly what the juice will do it or any type of sweet or carbohydrate. I mean, if you had celery, for example, a stick of celery, I will promise you that you're not going to stimulate insulin too much. Right, because the whole breaking of the fast thing is really the question of not is it breaking my fast, but is it spiking insulin? And how much insulin is it spiking, right? Yeah. Yes, but if you're eating in general, it will increase insulin, but the point is that it really has to do with how much food how much? you're eating. Like if you were to, um, if you have a problem with high insulin and you do these massive meals, let's say you're in intermittent fasting and you're just trying to cram everything down your throat and you're eating one meal a day and you're going too fast, <laughs> you're going to spike insulin um, because you haven't adapted yet fully. So you just, it's a matter of um, not overstuffing yourself as well because it can spike insulin. So. Okay. It's a little balance there, Karen. Okay, good. Well, I have another question. And um, this one is from Linda on YouTube. She says her husband had a quadruple bypass. He has high blood pressure. He has high cholesterol. Can he do keto? Okay. I was waiting for that question, Karen. Good. Because that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of like uh, falls into the syndrome X or it's called metabolic syndrome, which is a combination between high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood glucose, and belly fat. Um, and it's so almost hysterical to, if you s do a search on this, uh, Wikipedia, which I don't even know who wrote this, but so-called the experts, but it'll say, there's, um, we found that there's an association between high insulin and metabolic syndrome. No, 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 it's not an association, it's a cause. Um, that problem is coming directly from a cause, which is high insulin. It's not complex, it's not unknown. Insulin will cause that because if you look under hyperinsulinemia, which is high insulin, high blood pressure, stiffened arteries, belly fat, high cholesterol. So if someone asks me, do I need to do keto? Well, because you're not doing keto, that's why you have the problem. Mm. It is the only solution that you can do because you want to drop the carb. I mean, think about it. Sugars go high. And even if you have diabetes, sugars go high. Uh, hello, what do you need to do? You need to drop the sugars. Don't eat sugar. But people aren't focusing on that. It's like obvious. It's the elephant in the room. It, you have to drop the sugar. So, uh, yes, do keto intermittent fasting and watch what happens. It'll be quite miraculous. It's good for the heart. Perfect. And one more. Okay. I have, uh, I think it's San May on Facebook uh, saying, too many vegetables kills my gut. I tried carnivore, feel amazing, but got blood work done and have high elevated or have elevated kidney levels, could my kidneys be messed up from dehydration? So, Well, I, I don't know your history, there. but I'm just going to, just what I have, I'm going to tell you that um, if you have a problem digesting vegetables, then go with fermented vegetables, okay? Fermented vegetables. Now, here's the thing. Uh, one of the goals of eating vegetables is to, you know, provide some fiber. So maybe you're going to have to stick with the type of, like, I don't know, romaine lettuce, can you do that versus all these other complex vegetables that you probably don't have the bacteria to digest? So do that. Give your, uh, your micros the fiber, but then you need the nutrients. So there's really only one food that has more nutrients than vegetables. And, oh. I, wa and I, want, I want to see if anyone can guess it right on Facebook or YouTube. So go ahead and okay. tell me. Let me get to the bottom here. Um, guys, We, we had this me, quiz before. So yeah. Tell me uh, what food has way more nutrients, okay, than vegetables. Get to the bottom here of Facebook. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and give me your comment, and then as they come in, Karen, tell me. So here's the question. Is pickled the same as fermented? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at my computer. Yes. Uh, eggs, kale. Oh, we got 521 here on YouTube says liver. Okay, you were right. Okay, it's organ meats. 
Okay. Yeah. So you you may um, and organ do a grass-fed organ meat like a, a liverwurst or or some type of kidney and brain. And I know that might sound disgusting, but I'm telling you that will actually give you the nutrients, and it's actually easier to digest than vegetables for a lot of people. Okay. So do that right now, and you might have to just substitute for some of the other uh, minerals that you would normally get from vegetables. So kidney and brain. I just want to take it back a second. Kidney. And they used to do this. A long time brain. ago. Brain. Yeah, you can. You, a what is it? You make a bed. burger out of that? I'm you make have a, a burger brain, brain. Burger. A burger brain. A burger. Now, a personally, brain. I wouldn't. I can't do that. But some people like it. <laughs> I can't do that. But why don't you try that? But it, I'm just telling you how to get the nutrients. Okay. I'm yeah. just the messenger, Karen. Right. Now she couldn't. <laughs> I, now with the kidney problem, doing intermittent fasting is probably the best thing for the kidney that you can do to help the kidney, and uh, of course, low carb. Because think about. Karen, think about what destroys the kidney, high sugar. Mm. So low sugar diets are good for the kidney. Okay? Okay. Good. All right, so now I need to go to Randy uh, from Illinois. Uh, go ahead, Randy. Hey, Doc. Um, I'm on the uh, um, keto and the intermittent fasting, and sometimes I wake up and um, the noon meal, I'm not hungry, but what I do is do a... Uh, meal replacement shake and do your electrolyte mix with the uh, juice powder to blend those two together work good then I take your BE vitamins and my question is is it okay to go from one meal a day to two meal a day or um, should I continue like if I'm not hungry at noon just do the meal replacement and the electrolytes and the juice and uh, would you rather have me go all the way till five or six and that do the, I do the, uh, the shakes for my nutrition in the afternoon. I think you asked a really good question, Randy. Um, and here's the answer. Um, the rule of thumb that we need to think about is if you're not hungry, Randy, don't eat. Why? Because you're actually in ketosis. So as soon as you eat, regardless if it's a protein shake or whatever or a meal replacement, it's going to spike insulin. So just don't ride the wave. Go as long as you, till you can, till you're not hungry. It's really healthy to do intermittent fasting. So yeah, I wouldn't eat something if you're not hungry at all. Now, if you're doing a shake, um, meal replacement, just make sure that you add a little fat in there. That's the only thing because sometimes the protein, I, like I have a meal replacement with MCT oil that's in there already. So it adds the fat because you don't want just a protein powder uh, strictly. So yeah. Don't eat if you're not hungry, Randy. I'm telling you, don't do it. Okay, now we're going to go to Sandra from Southern Maryland had a question about coffee. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, hi I guess I'm confused on whether or not you can have the MCT oil, like a tablespoon, if you're fasting and not eating your first meal till like noon or one. Okay, you mean in the coffee? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I can still have the coffee with the MCT oil as well as bone broth even until my first meal at like noon or 1 o'clock. Yeah, you can do that, Sandra. Totally fine. Um, if it's working for you, great. The only, only point I'm going to bring up about the Bulletproof coffee, which you can add the MCT, add butter or coconut oil, is that let's say you do this and you plateau and you're not losing inches or weight and your metabolism just sucks, okay? What you could do is you can omit the fat in the coffee and go a little longer because it's a little bit of a meal. So that's just one point. But if you're still losing and everything's going great, ride the wave, keep the coffee in there, keep the MCT oils, not a problem. And even the bone broth. Okay? Good question. All right, Karen, I'm oh. going to give you a question. Well, at first is some information because, you know, we said someone's like, is pickled the same as fermented and we said yes and then someone said no it's not so I did a quick search and actually some pickled is fermented and some fermented is pickled or whatever but there is a difference here like a cucumber is just thrown into a brine but fermented food really has this bacterial right. action going so just to clarify for you canning experts out there um, fermented vegetables definitely a little different than pickling well, I think that um, when you do the Bubby's brand pickles Bubbies. and also the sauerkraut, which 
is the best, I think. You're going to get a lot of uh, friendly bacteria in there. In fact, Karen, yeah. if you're doing the sauerkraut, um, which I love, you realize that you're getting, per cup, you're getting 700 milligrams of vitamin C from, from sauerkraut. Did not realize that. Did you know what a normal amount is, the requirements that you would need? No. It's like 70 to 90, okay? So basically okay. you're getting 10 times the vitamin C in sauerkraut. Wow, well, and I can tell you, I've made sauerkraut before, and it's the easiest thing on the planet to make. It is literally, you throw something. Can you make some more later today? Uh, you know what, every once in a while I buy the cabbage, and then I... I just forget or we use it in something else. Let's but make I can it. do that. That I vitamin C is great. I mean, you throw great. it in there and you literally forget about it. It's, it's great for the gums. It's good for your t uh, your connective tissue around your teeth. And uh, yeah, it's good. Okay. Okay. So Erica, you're from Portland, Oregon. Go ahead. You're up. You're on. Oh, thanks for taking my call. Um, I am just, uh, I heard some, a lot of things this morning that kind of helped uh, a little bit, but i um, been doing keto since last February. Um, have lost about 58 pounds. Um, I'm without a gallbladder. I have PCOS and um, have never been diagnosed with diabetes, but um, did have a, one doctor send me to go have my um, fasting blood sugar and insulin done. And blood sugar has never really been too much of a problem in the past. Um, my A1C always comes back totally fine, like 4.8 or something. And But the insulin like spiked and stayed there and just thing and she's like okay we definitely have a problem <laughs> hey do you remember so she at that time go ahead mm -hmm. what was that uh, at that time she just said it's going to have to be diet or medication or well, you choose but there's no turn back you have to do something with that kind of insulin problem yeah hey do you remember what it is what your uh, insulin was the level i don't i don't have okay. a number that's um, totally fine okay but so um so i do less then are equal to 25 net carbs a day, and I have um, lemon juice and ACV in the morning, um, like uh, pretty early, like early, 8 o'clock. Um, bone broth, with bone broth, and add some added collagen. So that's my morning thing. And then bullet coffee just recently was trying to set that out a little later in the day, like 11.30, because we do put a tablespoon of butter, MCT, and heavy cream in there. <laughs> so okay. I figured that might be stalling some of the weight loss since I've only lost about a little over half of what I need to lose. And then no snacking or anything. And then um, a small snack size lunch with powdered greens uh, and, and my supplements at that time. And then dinner at 630. Okay. Um, so I'm really having like a, kind of a small snacky lunch with dinner. I didn't know it. I thought possibly the bone broth and the greens or the ACV lemon juice was maybe spiking the blood sugar. I took it recent, uh, just last week, last week and saw numbers that were crazy high um, for fasting. Uh, they were 1, 146 in the morning, 8 a.m. before taking anything. Um, and then 129 this week. And then I decided to, that was after 13 hours of fasting from dinner. And then, so till 8 o'clock. And then I waited that whole day and didn't do anything um, at all. I think I'm trying to remember if I did my bone broth and the ACD, but I didn't have the bullet coffee. Till, and then so I checked it at 4 o'clock and it was still at 118. <laughs> okay. So can, I'm going to give you a, a couple of things. 21 hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is a really good question um, <clears throat> because here you are, everything's going great, but, but they checked your insulin is high. And I'm telling you, I think the majority of the population has high insulin. And that's like the thing that's behind the scene because doctors never check it. High insulin will will push the sugars down and make it even look low or normal sometimes too, depending on what's going on. But the fact that you've been on this for a year and it's still, or it's high, we have nothing to compare it to though. You're gonna have to do a little bit stricter intermittent fasting to go to, um, probably go to one and a half or one meals a day, one meal a day, okay? And the reason for that is intermittent fasting will definitely drop your insulin down faster than anything. So that's what you're going to have to work up to. The bone broth is a bit of protein. Only have that with the meal. 
uh, as part of your protein. The other thing that you would do is there's two min uh, trace minerals, zinc and chromium. Both of those minerals are really awesome to help support the pancreas and help reduce insulin. So those are two things that you might want to add to the mix. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to go strict with your intermittent fasting and then do that for like a month and then recheck it and it should come down. If not, call me. All right. Very good. And Karen, um, yeah. what we're going to so. do is we're going to reveal right now uh, the best nut and mm. then at the very end we'll release the best berry. So, I, so we're going to split this up. So I want everyone to type down what you think the absolute best nut to consume on a ketogenic diet would mm, be. I don't want to lose this. Okay, oh, so right as people are typing that, I'm going to go to Jay, Fort Lauderdale. You had a question about uh, berberine, right? Uh, berberine, Dr. Berberine. Bur Pleasure yeah. to meet you. Nice meeting you. So, yeah, just to give you a little background, I'm a you know 40-year-old, pretty healthy, you know, bodybuilder, you know, below 10% body fat. I work out regularly, cardio and lifting weights. And lately, I've been having a lot of issues with high blood sugar. I measure it daily. My blood is here on the 120s, 130s. I have a history of family diabetes. So basically, what I did about a month ago is I fasted for five days, a straight water fast, and jumped right into uh, into a ketogenic diet, intermittent, which I only eat between the hours of 12 or 8 and then 16-hour break. I'm still having a hard time getting my sugar levels uh, down. So uh, I was wondering, how long in your experience does it take for you to experience a drop in your blood sugars? Because I have a feeling that I just might be becoming a type 2 diabetic somehow. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if because of uh, use of uh, human growth hormone that I use regularly in mm. HGH at a very low dose, about two units a day. So I'm not sure uh, why my blood sugar levels are not going down. And I still have ketones because I do, uh, I do measure them by blood every day. And I'm in ketosis, but my sh blood sugar levels are still high. So question, um, what is your sugar? What is the level? The levels are in the range between 120 to 130 okay. uh, every morning fasted okay. with ketones. In the past, when I did a ketogenic diet, they will go down to the 50s, 60s, but now I just can't seem to get them down. Yeah. And I'm taking chromium picolinate and I'm taking alpha lipoic acid, the R form as well, to assist with that. And I sometimes take berberine, which is a natural alternative to metformin. Right. When I know I'm going to have a meal and I probably want to enjoy like a glass of wine or just like a small piece of car, like a small piece of bread, I usually take the berberine before the meal, which I understand helps with the uh, controlling the sugar levels after a meal. Okay, Jay, I think I know the problem. <laughs> okay, are you sitting down? Okay. Okay, good. I am. Good. It's the alcohol, it's the snack, it's the little bit of bread that you're eating. The berberine is not strong enough to counter that because here's the thing. If you consume a little bit of the wrong thing, um, you're going to raise insulin. Insulin is the dominating hormone. Let's say you have berberine or, or some other thing to try to counter it. This is dominating. Insulin is dominating. So all it takes is a little bit of the negative to drown out all the good. So if you really are serious about getting your blood sugars down, you're going to have to be 100% clean. No little snacks, no alcohol, no little anything, okay? And then if it still doesn't work right away, Jay, all that means is you need to do it longer because you've been on for a short period of time. You just have to ride the wave. Sometimes it takes a few months before it kicks in and then you can stay on that very consistently. So that's all you need to do. Yeah, there are different, um, there's even like goat's rue and there's different uh, herbs and plants that you can take, but I would work, go to the basics first before you start adding all these other things. Okay, get the diet cleaned up really good. But thanks for calling, and that's a really good, important point. And Karen, what kind of answers are we getting? We are primarily getting pecan, walnut, macadamia. Uh, someone threw in some seeds here, which isn't really a nut, but sunflower seeds. But those are the three. Okay. Yeah. So first thing I'm going to tell you, Karen, is the worst nut. Oh. It's the cashew. <gasps> Those are so yummy. The net, the net carb on that is like in the 20s. Oh. Could For one a, nut? It, yeah. No, in a, a cup. A it, cup? Yeah. That's a lot of nuts. 
I know. I'm just telling you, relatively speaking. I think it must be less. It, Maybe it's a between serving. Between 20 and 30. I, I, I can't tell you the exact number, but okay. the point is that the cashew is the worst nut. The okay. best nut, hands down, that has the lowest carb and a good amount of fat is the... Drum roll. Pecan. Pecan pie. Yeah. So pecan <laughs> is the winner. Okay? Okay. And in just a couple minutes, we're going to do the next one. The best berry. Okay. It's Stay exciting. tuned that one. Yeah, this, this is exciting. I'm like edge of my seat right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, so now you guys can answer the question while I'm going to answer, like talk to this person. Try to type back, well, what is too. the absolute, hands down, best berry you can eat? And uh, I'm going to let you know if you're correct. Okay. Okay. Now, let's go to Jen. Uh, you've been on the hold for 23 minutes. Go ahead, Jen. And it was worth every minute. <laughs> Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I love you, but I'll get quick to it just so somebody else can get in. And I think when you answered Randy's call, it kind of answered my question. But as far as me being on keto and not having an appetite, I am concerned about getting my nutrition in. Right. And I don't know how, I mean, I have bought all your products. My husband makes fun of me. It looks like the Dr. Berg store in my kitchen. And then I felt like I was taking too many pills. So I'm wondering if I could just use your meal replacement shakes and the kale shakes and then just kind of dump the vitamins in the shake. Will that help me get the nutrition that I need? Or is it safe to just literally not eat? Okay. Well, here's the thing. You can take the nutrition on an empty stomach. You don't have to take it with meals. Did you know that? No. Okay. Because a lot of it says take with your meals, take with the yeah. second meal. And I'm like, well, I don't I have know. enough meals to get all these vitamins in. <laughs> I know. I probably, I should have clarified that. So you can take them on an empty stomach. Not a problem. I probably don't want you to do a meal replacement to take, put them in there. I just want you to do the... Do the nutrients, and and again, if you're not hungry, don't eat. I think I think you're doing great. Um, I don't think it's just that you know people have this idea they have to <coughs> excuse me just take nutrients with uh, food. But the only time you would do that is maybe with the gallbladder formula and the digestive formula. Those two right there, because that actually acidifies. I have adrenal. I have your adrenal kit. So. Oh, your adrenal kit. Okay, so you have you have the gallbladder uh, formula. So mm -hmm. you, you would just take that after your one meal, and then you're good. So you don't have to take that other than that. I think, do you do just one meal or two meal? Um, I, try, I have to do like a 16-8 because I really just don't have an appetite. I can't force it all in in, in a short period. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've kind of been relying on the shakes, and then I add some MCT oil and maybe try to get like two hard-boiled eggs down with it just to kind of keep my fat up. But literally... I'm trying to get seven cups of salad, but by the time I'm in my second cup, I feel like I'm going to get sick if I eat one more bite. So Yeah, I know. I know. Um, don't force it. Do as much as you can. And uh, I think with the extra enhancement, it's probably going to compensate fine. Um, but um, I really like to, what's really easy for me is, is I blend the kale. Uh, you just put some of this or even the wheatgrass juice in there. Blend the kale. And you can liquefy that kale and drink it. It's easier. You can go right in there and you're good for the, you know, half of the day anyway. But, yeah, that's the situation. But uh, the other thing that Karen is doing now, which is a great idea, by the way, for your salads, <laughs> pork rinds. Man, I had it the other day. That was really good. So yeah, so I want to explain this, right? So we... What were we putting on that was so good? You, you, well, the feta cheese, you put the cheese, you put the, uh, uh, what else? You had a little nuts on there, you had, yeah, oh, it was, the onion. Well, over the holiday when they onions. had the onion, the, or, the organic onion straw or whatever from wherever we got it, and that had very, very low carb, and I would put it on just as a little crunchy. You know, I do nuts and stuff like that. Sh slivered, really tiny nuts. And ran out of that, and... Um, we ended up with some pork rinds. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to crunch these up a bit and sprinkle them on my salad. And I'm going to tell you, that was really good. I was surprised. It was, it it's really, really added, good. Yeah, and make sure you get the no MSG pork rinds. Put some salt on there. Or actually, it's already salted. Yeah. But it's quite good. Yeah, adds just a nice little flavor and some fat. And yeah. So it's just like you eat, you don't normally like eating large salads, but you even told me that you would... 
I wish I could have another salad. Well, I did have another salad. You did. But you know, another thing too, for people who are trying to get more salad in, maybe you're already doing this, but this was a trick for me because I felt the same way. I mean, obviously, you know, I started blending a lot of my greens. So I would do maybe four or five cups of greens just in my kale shake. But for the salad, when I was getting used to eating that much salad, they have these great, they're like um, scissors, sort of, that chop up your lettuce. And it just makes them into much smaller pieces. And I don't, for me, it's a lot easier to eat a lot more greens. It, you know, it's like half the volume once you're done chopping it. And uh, I don't, it's just a tip, but it might help you. Yeah, and also one ounce equals one cup. So you're talking... Um um, a bag is five, maybe it could be five, five to, to eight yeah. cups. But here, here's the other thing, Karen. Um, <clears throat> when you're consuming salad, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. versus other vegetables, yeah. you need less vegetables per salad. With just salad. Say that again. If you just have salad, you're going to need more salad. If you have only vegetables, you could get by with less. So you could oh, probably. Oh, you mean like. Yeah, you could probably get by with like five cups of vegetable versus eight to ten cups of salad. They're kind of the like same yeah. kind of a comparison with nutrition. There's a little bit more nutrition than vegetables than there are just regular salad. I mean, the thing is, though, you, you know, when I eat vegetables, usually I, I, I cook them lightly. I mean, unless it's green peppers or something like that. I'm not going to have five cups of raw Brussels sprouts. I'm going to cook them. What's wrong with that, Karen? Well, I don't no, know. No, I'm just that. kidding. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course not. You're gonna. I'm talking about like green beans and oh, okay. bell peppers and yeah. those Five cups. things. That's still yeah. Yeah. So, just a tip. It's a just tip. a tip. Okay. It's a tip. I have some questions. It's been a while ahead, since Karen. you've come to us in social media land. Go ahead. Okay. Good. So, I have. Um, oh, do you want to know about the berries? Or not yet? Not yet, Karen. Okay. That's the last question. That's the last question. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, I have a couple of here. Um, we have Ross from YouTube, and he's saying that after his breakfast in the morning, when his sugar rises, it manifests for him as anxiety, and it yeah. lasts about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. And um, that has been happening for the last almost a month, 24 yeah. days. So he wants to know what can he do. Um, <clears throat> that's a... Uh, uh, adrenal issue because what happens when the blood sugars start dropping the adrenals compensate and they're trying to bring up the sugar to bring up the uh, from the loss of sugar so it's really and then you experience a little adrenaline adrenal symptoms shakiness and all these other symptoms that's really what's happening so what you have to do and I did a video on this uh, you have to go about it a little bit slower um, back up a little bit Maybe start with three meals instead of two, or two meals instead of one. Support your adrenal, get more sleep, go for long walks, do acupressure on the adrenals with this device here. I have a whole technique. <clears throat> and then the other thing that you can do is add um, the nutritional yeast at the meal, or even during the, that sensation, so that will actually calm it down pretty nice. And of course, the potassium, but mainly the B vitamin. Mm. Um, but it's really an adrenal issue. That's all it is. And over time, that will improve. It will. Give it more time. Okay? Okay, good. Good. So on Facebook, Beverly is freezing all the time. Now, she doesn't say is she on keto or doing intermittent fasting. I can only assume. But uh, regardless, she's freezing all the time. Well, that's because, number one, she lives in Alaska, and it's winter. <laughs> and she left her coat. Yeah, so that's the, the that's the reason. So just wear more clothes. Okay. Now, it's, you're probably doing intermittent fasting and you're getting colder. Um, so <clears throat> that's part of the adaptation phase because your metabolism is adjusting. So I would just, um, in the meantime, ride the wave. It will get better over time. Um, but on, on occasion, it could be the adrenal because there's something called the sympathetic nervous system that gets activated with the adrenal um, that's um, underneath the whole thing. And sometimes that can make you feel really cold on your feet and your fingers, in which case you have to support the adrenals with nutrition. I have a lot of videos on that, but... Um, yep, oh, let's make that point. Um, there's videos on everything, literally. I, I mean, other than the really technical individual questions, 
There is a video on pretty much every question that's asked, either in the lab uh, group or on these live shows and the phone calls. Lots of videos already done on things. So uh, YouTube and Facebook, you have links above or below. Do they, they don't have to type anything. They'll you don't have to type anything. Just you click just it. click the link. Now, if yeah. you click that link right now, it's going to take you outside of the live show so that you can get this summary of videos, which is amazing that this has been organized and compiled into one document. But you come come right back then. Yeah, so now yeah. I need, uh, Lisa's been on the call. So Lisa, you're from Virginia Beach, go ahead. Yes, I had a question. I've been on the keto diet for the past year and my 13 year old daughter, she also is on it. But she had a lab work to come back and she has high cholesterol. Yeah. And I was saying, I, I know that you said about the, the fat and the cholesterol in the cell. Yeah. And the cholesterol doesn't go anywhere or something. I was wondering, is this the wrong diet for her? Or is the cholesterol just supposed to lower because she's not losing any weight either? How old is she? I don't. 13. 13. And does she uh, have a lot of weight to lose? She's about 30 pounds. Okay. Is she, is she doing um, the keto correctly and is she doing intermittent fasting? Well, she does the intermittent fasting. Like today, she carried her lunch with her. She didn't eat any breakfast, so okay, um, eight hours sleep. Plus, I think she eats at eleven o'clock, maybe twelve or thirteen hours of fasting until she eats lunch. Is she doing a lot of vegetables but, and or salad? Well, we we eat salads at in the evening time, maybe two cups of salad. But you know, a thirteen year old, she's not going to eat too many vegetables anyway. Yeah. Um. So I try to get her to eat like. You know, a couple cup of uh, you know vegetables in the evening time. Got it. But other than that, you know, we eat eggs and bacon during this you know uh, weekend, and I'm not, I'm not sure that she's eating too much you know cholesterol foods. Yeah, the, you know, um, he, cholesterol. Here's the thing: I, I want you to, I want you and her to go to the YouTube and type under the cholesterol, Doctor Berg, and just watch those videos because you need all you need the whole picture, but as she's losing the cholesterol, I mean the fat from the uh, fat cell, uh, part of that's going to be cholesterol. So it's going to increase initially. It's not a bad thing. It has to come out. But if she doesn't have the amount of vegetables, it might stay up higher. It's not an issue because the type of cholesterol is probably the type that is more uh, it's called fluffy or buoyant. It's type A cholesterol, which watch the videos and understand what that means. It's just going through the body. Um, but the whole goal is to drop the carbs down. Uh, so then the cholesterol can come out. So she needs to do maybe the kale shake uh, to get to start cleaning it out uh, better. But and then she should start noticing the clothes start shrinking and less hungry and less craving for sweets. Okay, so do that, uh, Lisa, and then let us know next uh, next week how it how it goes. Okay. So now, can we ask for a drum roll, please? Do we have a drum roll? Do we have a drum roll? And Karen, can you tell me, did anyone get it right? The absolute best berry. Can you tell us the feedback, Karen, on social media? <laughs> well, I can tell you what the answers are, and they're all over the map. Oh, they are? Yes. We have got Himalayan goji. We've got Asiya, blackberry, blueberry, strawberry, um, raspberry. It's all over the place. Okay. And um, so I thought you were going to tell us the worst berry first. I'm going to tell you the worst berry is okay. uh, the blueberry. <gasps> no. Yes. Not the blueberry. Yeah. Now when I say worst, what? what hold on. Everybody's I, look at uh, producers. I, Everybody are like, what? I'm, what the heck? Wait a second. You know? <laughs> I'm just comparing the two berries. You can still do the berries. I'm just telling you. Oh. If you wanted to go extreme keto, okay. take it to the next level. Extreme. That's going to be our next closed group. Yeah, extreme. extreme keto, and you want to really be fanatic about your carbs, and you want to take it down a little bit lower. Uh, switch from blueberry to the best berry, which is the blackberry. Blackberry is the winner. Now I'm going to give you the second to last berry as well. What do you mean? Raspberry. Is that? Raspberry and blackberries are oh, okay. almost tied, but uh, blackberries are just a little bit better. They're like really low on the sugar scale. All right, Karen. Okay, good. And we're getting the this. Is, the, is it really that time? <gasps> it's that time. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your attention. Um, great questions. We're going to see you next Friday. Don't forget the links. Yeah. 
11 for the o'clock summary. in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, so we can get the California group. All right? Have okay. a great weekend. Actually, week. Week. It's only Wednesday. Weekend, weekend. Yeah. See ya. Okay, bye.